Okay, for those of you listening and not watching right now, let me set the scene. I'm currently uh, at the NFL UK HQ in central London with a legend of the NFL uh, turned broadcasting hotshot, OC <laughs> Umeni Yoda. How you doing, brother? Absolutely, I'm good, good man. To see How you, about man. yourself? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks, for, thanks for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, so, basically, I looked on Wikipedia. Okay. It says that you live between Georgia and New Jersey. Is okay. That, is that right? I, I swear, I, in America, yes. Right, I have okay. to. I have a place in New Jersey and a place in um in Georgia. But you must have a base here as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm here, like uh, in Notting Hill. No, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man's got style. Man, I, lo <laughs> I love Notting Hill too, man. Such Beautiful. a nice place. Yeah. Did so you go to the carnival and stuff when the carnival comes down? I went last year, and I said to myself, I will never do this again. <laughs> <laughs> will never will I do that again. It's it was hectic, crazy. right? That was crazy. Super hectic. Crazy. All right, so um. Let's talk about let's talk about you. Let's talk okay. about your early days, your right. early your early life. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? Where mm -hmm. did you grow up? I was born in um, Golders Green, London, actually, That's and um, yeah, I was there till I was seven, and then my parents are Nigerian, so yep. when I left um, Golders Green, I went back to Nigeria, and I was in Nigeria from seven to fifteen. Was that your 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 choice to go? No, because I've got a lot of Nigerian friends, okay. and they normally get if they've got like a you know a West Indian or African yeah. heritage, mm -hmm. they get taunted with the fact that they might have to go back, right, <laughs> to, right. Get, to get schooled or get yeah, schooled exactly. if, they, if they act up back like over yeah, in the UK. Yeah. But was that uh, was that for education? Was that for social? What was it for? Yeah, uh, my parents. Um, I think they my dad's business has started to pick up a little bit in right. Nigeria, so we had to leave here and go over there, and so um. Yeah, I went to Nigeria, and it was, Nigeria's crazy. Man. Really? <laughs> yeah. What was Nigeria was like back then? Well, it was, well, for me, it was fun mm. because, you know, there's a lot of us. There's 13 of us. Right. I have 13 brothers and sisters. Wow. Yeah, wow. my dad wasn't watching too much TV, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what yes, was going no. on. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we went back, went back to um, Nigeria, and it, all of us were, were really close family. So it, it was fun growing up, but it's um, it's just a completely different lifestyle yep. than, than over here. You yep. know, you see all the things going on there, um, but the people are really good people. So it yeah, was yeah. fun. Yeah. And then what was the transition like from living back in Nigeria to yeah. moving across to the U.S.? Like, what was the reason oh, behind it? Man. And how was that? Yeah, well, the thing is, once, you, once you're in Nigeria, um, if you're able to, what people like to do is they like to send their kids abroad to go to school because yep. if you can school over there and come back to Nigeria, you have a, a better chance of getting a better job. That's right. And so my parents, um, well, my dad, he um, he just started to send us to America one by one, you know, to get an education. Wow. And so by the time I was 15, um, he sent me over there to go live with my sister, who was already in college, right. and um, started to go to high school and get education. So, how like, how far down the pecking order are you with fifth, the rest of your, your fifth? fifth. Born, yeah, okay, fifth so born. were you the fifth to go out? To I America? was the. I was the fifth. Oh, yeah, there you go. I right. was the exact fifth. So he did it chronological. Fair play to him. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> All right, so then you move over to the U.S. Yeah, big deal. Yeah, to, uh, for any young person, like yeah. moving away from their home and you know their parents and whatnot. Um, what was it like being out there with your sister and kind of like settling in? Man, it was it was crazy. I think because um, you move from from Nigeria and my whole opinion of America at the time, because that's all you see is TV, you're just watching Baywatch and Fresh Prince. So yeah, yeah, my yeah. opinion of America was, you know, it was the land of milk and honey. <laughs> and I, I got sent to Alabama. Like, <laughs> wow. oh my goodness. So when I got to America, I didn't, what I was seeing was completely different than right. what I saw on TV. I was in like the country, <laughs> and um, wow. yeah, and because uh, you know we had fallen in like some hard times or whatever, so we were living. You know what? You know what the projects are? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we had like we were living like right next to the project, okay. so we were in the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I was like, man, this <laughs> ain't America. What is this? You know? And so Send me it back. was. I know. I, I, I wanted to go back because right. you know, for me, it was better in. In Nigeria, yeah, yeah, yeah. than you know what what I was seeing <laughs> in America at the time, so it was it, it was a crazy transition. But you know, because of of my my background and my parents always instilling education, I was just like, okay, school, 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 school. So I focused on that. Yeah. Um, my sister was in college at the time. But she um, she always says I never gave her any problems because because she was always gone. I could have really yeah, I could have really acted <laughs> up yeah, yeah but yeah. I didn't so um, it, it was cool. And was that down to sport? Do you think? Do you think sport kind of like filled the, the void to kind of stop you from you know maybe venturing down the wrong path or whatever? Yeah, Partying too hard, I not studying. I don't think so, man. I think um, 
I think I was lucky because my older brother was he, he was also there and he lived next door to us, but I was living with my sister right. and he had um some friends and they were like they were really cool dudes, man. And so they like took me under their wing right. and so I would go with them and they were they were really into sports and so we'd be playing basketball all night, you know, playing football all night, like things of that nature and yeah. playing video games. They weren't about that you know, partying and getting right. crazy. Nah, so, okay. you know, I had some really good mentors and good yeah. people who were around me at that time. So how, how good a basketball player are you? I was okay. Yeah? yeah, I could play a little bit, man. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm great, but, you know, I can hold my own out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with regards to UK sport, mm -hmm. obviously you were quite young when you, when you left the UK, but did you have any passion for like soccer or oh, football? Oh, no question. Yeah? Soccer's my first love. Still is. Really? I play, I'm going to play soccer when I leave here. Oh, that's what it's yeah, about. Yeah, we got a game. Uh, well, I, I support players. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm a, a big A lot of professionals event. say that. Exactly. A lot of professional <laughs> sports people say, I support the player rather yeah. than the team. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Well, I, I think the reason for that is because, you know, as, as a professional, once you see that teams view it strictly as a business, yeah. it takes away, like, yeah. Because you see it firsthand, so you're like, I'm yeah. not going to be, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, if I, I know you. for a fact that they don't really care nothing about the players. Yeah, I hear And you. so, um, yeah, I, I support Ibrahimovic, man. That's, I, Ibra. I love Ibra, man. Do you know what I love about Ibra? Because mm. like, it, it hurts me to say it because I'm a Liverpool fan. All right. So, obviously, he plays for Manchester United. Right. They're like big rivals. Mm. But his self-belief and his self-confidence. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? It's <laughs> insane. <laughs> insane. What's he like? Yeah. To like? What's he like? Have you met him? Yeah, I've met him before. He was good. Yeah? Yeah, he was really cool. You know, they say you should never meet your heroes. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. But, you know, when I met him, he was a really good dude, genuine, nice. You know, we talked about America. American football, and um, he he was he was he was great, man. I can't wait to see him again. Nice, 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 nice. Tell me about the moment that you first kind of realized that you were good at American football, or other people realized that you were good. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize it for a while, honestly. <laughs> I, um, I the, my first year there, I was terrible. Are you at serious? It. Yeah, I was very bad at it because I had never even seen American football up until the, the time I got to America. So I'd never right. seen it until I was like 15 years old. Right, right, right. So I didn't even know what they were doing out there. And But I did realize that, you know, the football players had the cheerleaders and those, <laughs> those popular people. I was going to ask you about yeah. that. Because, like, what, in the UK, our perception of American football is mm. we get it from movies and right. TV shows, um, you know, ballers and things like that. Right. Is, it, is, it, is, that what, is that a true representation of what it's like? You know, the, the players go out with the cheerleaders. Right. You, you're the big men on campus. Yes. Is that how it is? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, like, like honestly, being a, a professional athlete or having made it to the NFL, that show Ballers is very realistic. Is it real? You can tell. It's got that feel about very it. Very realistic, it? man. And like the first season I watched it, I was like, man, this is, this, something's going on here. And then I found out that the writer is a guy by the name of Rashad Mendenhall, and okay. he played running back for the Steelers for right. a long period of time. Right, right. Because it was just, it was too, too yeah, it was too yeah, authentic. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, it's it, it's accurate, man. And um, the, the football, because American football is so big in the country, yeah. um, if you're a football player, then you kind of, you know. Yeah, 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 especially if you're a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. You, um, you, you, you live a good life. So what was that moment like? Can you remember the moment when you thought, okay, these people really believe in mm -hmm. my ability? Yeah. Um, how was that? How was that? It, 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 it was strange. I think, you know, high school, nobody really recruited me. I only got one scholarship offer, and that was to go to Troy. And that right. was uh, that was just kind of like an off. It was like it was almost like a mistake. Right. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Yeah. And so I finally got into college. And my first year, um, I was a red shirt, which is I didn't get to play at all my first year. Okay. But then immediately after that, they got put me right into the starting lineup. And so I started playing. At a very young age, I was, like, younger than everybody else out there, and the coach just kept on playing me and playing me and playing me. So I was like, this guy must think I can yeah. I can play a little bit. I didn't really think I was that good, right. but he kept on playing me. Mentally, how was mm -hmm. that for you? Was that, was that scary, thinking that you're not good enough? Right. Um, or did you feel a sense of freedom because you're, the, you're younger than everybody else, so right. you can just go out and express yourself? Yeah, definitely the latter. Yeah. I, I was like, man, it didn't matter. I knew the guy behind me definitely wasn't <laughs> – <laughs> wasn't good, so there was no there was no backup plan for them. Right. So I was just in there, you know, playing, you know, freely expressing myself and, you know, playing pretty well. And then I think my junior year was when I really realized that okay, I might have a future being able to play this game because I had started to get you know better than you know everybody else. Yeah. 
Talk to me about the transition from college football yeah. to the NFL. Obviously, um, I'm still kind of getting my head around it, but the draft pick and all yeah. that sort of stuff. What was your experience of the draft pick? Yeah, that, that that's a big thing in a, in a football yeah, career, right? Pro yeah, football. yeah, it, it was. I think um, the whole process is just crazy. It's like yeah. a, it's like a meat market, yeah. you know. Yeah. And because I wasn't invited to the combine, the combine is is a place where all the top players go. Right. Uh, the NFL, all 32 teams are there. They invite everybody, all the top players to go to this yep. combine event, and they test you. But, you know, I think at the time they didn't – I wasn't regarded as a top player coming out, so I wasn't invited to the combine. Which is insane. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> what you've achieved in that yeah. – the way that it started, yep. that's just crazy. It is crazy. But um, so I wasn't invited there, and so I was what, – what happened was we have these things called pro days at your school. And um, what it is is the, your school invites NFL teams to come see right. you, right? Yeah. And so we had a pro day, and, uh, you know, we invited a couple of scouts to come over, and they came over. And, you know, once they, they test you, they see how fast you can run, your bench, you know, how high you can jump. But my numbers that I put up were so insane right. that all, they had to take notice then. And yeah. so in, instead of um, – Specimen. Yeah, <laughs> at the time it was crazy. So um, I now had to now visit, I think it was like 14 different teams in like 10 days. Wow. Yeah, because it was that close to the draft. And yeah. they were like, man, who's this guy? We need to see him. So I had to go to every single team to go see them, take the physical, do some tests. Wow. And it was, um, it was insane. But eventually I got drafted and it, it, was, it was crazy. Now, so you get drafted and you go to New York, the New Giants. York, New yeah. York Giants, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, from Alabama, <laughs> <laughs> were you like, I made it? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I remember once I got drafted, I didn't feel, I wasn't happy, and it's not because I wasn't. I was drafted a lot higher than most people thought. I, I was. I wasn't even. Because the draft, I was watching the draft on TV. You know, I had I'd had no family around me, nothing, right. because I didn't think I was going till the next day. Yeah, yeah. So when they called my name, I, I was in shock. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I answered the phone and, you know, spoke to them. But I remember feeling just pressure. Right. Uh, you know, because right. I had went, I had went higher than, you know, most people thought. And then I was going to New York, which I knew was, was big deal. crazy. It's a big deal. And so rather than feeling happiness, I just felt a bunch of pressure at the time. Which and is understandable. Yeah. Understandable. The, the happiness didn't come till later. Right. Okay. So uh, we're talking about what, like, it's like early noughties sort of time, like 2002, 2003. 2003. Yeah. Right. So 2003. back then... Jay Z, the yeah. Black Album's oh, out. Man. I mean, like New York, you got Dipset, right, like right. The scene would have been popping back then. Yeah, it was. what was it like being a young guy and then moving to New York and being in and around there? And oh, you're a pro baller, right? right. I mean, it, come on, there's nothing like it, man. <laughs> it's, it's hard to explain, like being young and you know being in that environment at the time, man. And it wasn't only Jay Z and, and Dipset. It was this was when like Fifty Cent was. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, oh yeah. Get man, Richard, that's right. yeah. yeah of course. And Fifty was just Fifty was <laughs> insane at that point in time, man. He was just kidding. I remember going to see him in concert, and um, it was a, it was a summer jam, is what they call. And they had that at Giant Stadium, right. and so I remember being backstage and seeing him come on, and it, it was the energy, right? That. Oh, wow. I'm sure you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Like, yeah, there's yeah. like an energy with certain people, yeah. and he just came through, and it, it was it, it was crazy. <laughs> and um, yeah, that, that, those times were great. So, how did you how did you manage to keep yourself grounded and focused on on the on the task at hand about being a, a pro ball player? Because yeah. obviously, you're in and around all of that stuff. Everyone wants to be your friend. Right. You know, people want you to go out all the time. Right. How do you maintain that kind of that focus? Did you live in and around it, or did you kind of separate yourself a little bit? Well, I. <sighs> <laughs> what what I did, I did a lot. Man. <laughs> tell me, tell me. Lie. I, 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 yeah, it was a, that that was a crazy, crazy <laughs> period of time, man. And um, I think my first year in the NFL, I really wasn't playing as much, right. you know. So I had a lot of time to just, you know, act a fool, and <laughs> I did because you're young and there's, you know, even though people would tell you all the time, listen. That city never sleeps, you know what I'm saying? Just don't don't go crazy, yeah, but yeah. you have to experience that for yourself. And Absolutely. so, you know, I yeah. went out there, I, you know, I went out, did a bunch of crazy stuff. Well, and, um, tell me, tell me, AC, tell me. It, it, anything you can imagine <laughs> was done at <laughs> that particular time. Anything you can imagine. All right, all right, it I'm was gonna, cool. I'm going to ask you something because <laughs> I've seen something on the internet a while back where I'm sure it was a, a, an NFL player. Mm. And he went into a, a strip club yeah. with like a bag, like a, a rucksack, a backpack of right. ones, and then just threw all the ones in the air right. and then left. Yeah. You do that? 
That happens all the time. <laughs> that happened on a weekly basis, man. It was so, some of the most insane things you've ever seen. I remember going to a, uh, into a strip club one time, and you know, I, I was a, 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 this is my a rookie. I was a rookie at the right. time, yeah. and Nelly. And no. P. Diddy were in there. Are you serious? Yeah. And they were just throwing money, throwing money. And I'm sitting over there with my boys. And we're like, all right. So we stopped throwing. <laughs> we're having a competition with people who have hundreds of millions of dollars. We're throwing money. And then after that, you go home by yourself and you're like, why? Like, that was the dumbest possible thing I could have ever done. I wasted money. I wasted my whole paycheck. Yeah. And these guys don't even think nothing about that. Yeah, yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but it's, it's, it's a learning experience, man. Learning experience for sure. Um, now, you also uh, played for the Atlanta Falcons, right? Yeah. Now, um, me being new to the NFL kind of like the last year or so, I've decided that the Falcons are going to be my team. Okay. Mainly because I love Usher, I love Ludacris. They're from Atlanta. Right. They kind of like fly the flag. Can you give me any tips uh, about about the team, about, yeah. about the culture behind it, the, the history, yeah. the heritage? At, at, at Atlanta is a great team. Um, you know, they haven't won a Super Bowl yet, mm -hmm. but the, the owner, Arthur Blank, is a, is a great man. And the team that they have now, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman, great football players, man. Yeah. And they have a lot of support in that team. It's yeah. like, you know, they had a dance. It's called like the Dirty Bird that they used <laughs> yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Atlanta, Atlanta is, um, is a great place. I, I played my last two years in the NFL. With the Atlanta Falcons. What was that like? Well, we were a terrible team. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were pretty bad. And it was crazy because the year before I got there, they, they were like almost at the Super Bowl. Like they were really good. And then I get there. And then for those <laughs> two years, we were like really bad. And then I left. And now they're really good again. <laughs> like, man, that was – I brought bad luck. But I lived in Atlanta during the off season my entire career. So I would stay the six months in New York. And then as soon as the season right. was over, I would go back to Atlanta. Now, anybody that I know that has been to Atlanta says, look, Ricky, you need to go to Atlanta. That's yeah. like, it's just the best place in the world. Yeah, right? How, it is. What is it like living there? It's, it's amazing. It, it really is, man. And I think um, because that's probably there in Washington, D.C. is where you see really the most successful black people. Yes in yeah. in america yeah. and so to be around that you know and to see like su really successful people who aren't athletes or entertainers just lawyers business people doctors inspiring it just it's it's really yeah. great to see something like that because realistically i would say 99 percent of the people we have in the country in america who are you know famous and influential are athletes and entertainers yep. so you don't really see the you know the people of color who aren't Absolutely, you know yeah. that but yeah. once you go there to atlanta and you see that man it's really cool i need to go i need to go yeah. if i go i'm gonna call you bro I'm yeah and speaking <laughs> of strip clubs <laughs> <laughs> anyway is that where it goes down yeah? oh my goodness gracious <laughs> you know, i don't know if it's a pg show but <laughs> man <laughs> amazing um, let's let's go back to um, your achievements. You've won yeah. two Super Bowls, right? Yeah. I mean, that mm -hmm. is just insane. <laughs> yeah. That is insane. Yeah. Um, talk to me about the position that you played, mm -hmm. um, your kind of role in the team yeah. and whatnot. Well, I was a defensive end. Yeah. And um, the most important position on the football field is the quarterback. Yes. But after the quarterback is the defensive end because the rules have changed to such a way that um, they give the offense a lot of leeway and ability to do right. a lot of different things. Yeah. So defensively, the only way realistically of stopping a team is you have to be able to get to the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. my position was to get to the quarterback and right. bring him down before he throws the ball. And is that called a sack? If a you sack, that? exactly, right, okay. yeah. yeah. So um, it was a really important position. And um, I think the position I played, the defensive end, along with other players, we had a guy by the name of Justin Tuck and Michael Strahan. We had some really good players, but we kind of re revolutionized the, the, um, the position because we took it we won Super Bowls by having an outstanding defensive line. Yeah. Like usually it's the quarterback or the running backs, yeah. but because we were so good on the, on the defensive line, right. we were able to win Super Bowls that way. So it was a it was a great time, man. I enjoyed it. And you've got like a, a few amazing records that are still, yeah. are still standing to this very day, right? Yeah. Like the, the most amount of sacks by yeah. a, a Giants player. And exactly. Like yeah, yeah, I did the I had um six sacks against Philly, then I also had um forced fumble records. In the NFL, wow. um, yeah, so I, yeah, I was okay, man. Yeah, I was all right. I was all right. I was all right. What What is the difference? The main difference that you can see now between when you were playing mm -hmm. the game and and the game now? Right. It's it's. I, I retired in 2015, mm. 
went back to see them. I went to see the Giants. Um, I think it was this year, and it was <laughs> it was crazy. It was the culture has changed so much, man. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Everybody's just dancing. Because <laughs> I, I, I see, like, you know, the Odell Beckham. Yeah. You know, like, they're in the locker rooms. Everyone's got the dance routine it's together. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, and some of the things they're doing it are things that I never, I wouldn't have thought that would be going on, man. The whole culture has completely changed, man. It's more of like a young hip-hop type yeah. of yeah. a vibe that you get there now. So if you go to practice now, they're playing hip-hop music throughout practice. No way. No way throughout practice, like, blasting it, too. And I think, you know, the coaches say it helps them be able to focus. If they can focus in that, yeah. once they get to the game with all the crowd noise, they're going to be able to focus. But okay, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I understand yeah. it, but it, I would never have thought that, you know, growing up and, and playing the way I played, I would never yeah. have thought that coaches would allow that. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, uh, it's well publicized about how much money is in the game. Right. Um, Obviously, you've you've been there, you've done it. <laughs> right. You had like an amazing contract. I think I read somewhere that you had the contract extension mm -hmm. that was going to be potentially worth like forty odd million or something crazy right. like that. Right. So you've been there, you've done it. Right. Um, with regards to like when when you were probably like uh, coming through, yeah. MTV Cribs was a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love that show because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you used to get to see like the you know the houses of the stars. Did you do a Cribs? I'm sure you did, did do one. Like, you did, did do one, did you? I, did. I thought so. I, did. I thought so. Mm -hmm. um, but is that is that what is that just normal like the houses and stuff like that is that just like standard procedure? Yeah, well, I'm not gonna say that because realistically, it's not as many people as you think that make that kind of money. Right. You know, I yeah. think maybe 20% okay. of the players okay. are the ones who are making a significant amount of money. Everybody else is making money, but not enough money to be able to live like that. Right. And I think that's where a lot of people get in trouble is because, you know, the, they see their teammates, you know, balling and doing things like that. And they don't have that kind of money, but they want to live like that. Yeah. And people expect them to live like that. And people expect them to do things that other people are doing. And they yeah. can't afford that. So you hear stories about people going broke and all that is yep. because – they try to, you know, emulate some of the teammates yeah. and live a lifestyle that they can't. But for certain people, certain players, the money is 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 ridiculous, man. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's the the craziest thing you've ever bought? Like the something that you you, you didn't need. Like for me, like mm. obviously it's a million leagues away. Right, right. But the most lavish thing that I've ever bought is a watch. Okay. Uh, nice was, one. It was a nice watch. Right, it, was, right. it, was, it was a nice watch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the bright watch. It was uh, the bright watch. I, I, <laughs> but I, it was a nice watch. Okay. Um, so for me, that's probably that was like that was a lot of money. Right. Um, so what about you? I um okay. If you're talking extravagant or just foolishness, either uh, you tell me. I bought a house, but because I bought it. And it's real estate; it appreciates in value. Yeah. So I don't consider that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. either. That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's right. fine. I did buy two Bentleys <laughs> at the same time. At the same time, <laughs> I bought a see. black and a white, <laughs> the same model. <laughs> and and uh, oh Why my goodness, not? so Why not? so stupid, man. <laughs> just so stupid. Didn't realize the minute you drive them off the lot, you they've depreciated. Yeah, yeah. And I bought two at the same time. <laughs> like, I don't. Oh, man, so stupid. In NFL, uh, the, the whole culture of it all, are, are players being educated now how, yeah. to, how to kind of make the transition from playing to not playing and finances and that type of thing and what they're going to do after? Yeah. Is that happening? Or? No question. I think over the past um, five to ten years, they've really put an emphasis on that, man, because all the stories were coming out about yeah. players going broke. Yeah. And Which shouldn't it, happen, It right? shouldn't happen. Yeah. It shouldn't. I mean, I mean, think about something uh, as a player – you play this game. A lot of them, they didn't start when I started. They started when they were like five. Yeah. And they played this game their whole life, put their body through hell. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's over. And a year after that, you have nothing. You know, like imagine yes. imagine going through something like that. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's crazy, but they're really educating players now, giving them different things to do, telling them how to invest their money, um, how to do the right thing with their money so as to not be a statistic. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've made that transition yeah. seamlessly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, when did you first realize that you had uh, a knack, uh, you mm. know, a skill 
for broadcasting because you're I've seen you on TV and I was mm-hmm. I did I had no idea. <laughs> right. like, you're, you're good. You're, I appreciate like, it. You're man. really good to watch as well. You're you're very entertaining. Appreciate um, it. So how how did that come about? How did you first first realize that you had a passion um, for that? There's a guy by the name of Michael Strahan and he he was one of my teammates and he he retired after we won our first Super Bowl in 2007. And him, me and him were born like two days apart. He's like my older brother. And, right. and uh, being around him for such a long period of time, me and him are the same person. Right. Have the same mentality, same attitude, same everything. Yep. And he retired and he went into television immediately after retiring. He was doing it while he was playing, yep. but he went in and then he he was doing the sports. And then he also did um, the show with um, Kelly Ripper is a morning show, right. and then now he's on Good Morning America. He's wow. like, he's huge. That's massive. <laughs> yeah, huge. Um, I, I read an interview somewhere where I think the interviewer asked you who's the most famous person in your phone, and yeah. you said, "Yeah, him. Said, yeah, no question." So he is he is big time. And so when I saw him doing that, I said, "Me and this guy are the same person, and if he can do it, I can do it." But I I also knew that there was only going to be room for one of him in America. Right. It's not going to be a lot. So yeah. if I was going to do it, I was going to have to leave America and go somewhere else. Wow, that is a lot of foresight. Yeah, know? yeah. And so, um, like like two years before I retired, I started to talk to um, Mark Waller, who's um, the the president of NFL International. Yeah. And I was like, listen, I, you know, I want to go to London. I want to go to London. I want to go there. Smart. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. But it wasn't like, you know, but because I had prepped him for it, it's not like as soon as I retired, I was like, hey, I want to go to, yeah. I had yeah. talked to him for two years while I was still playing, so he yeah. knew I was serious. Yeah. So um, the minute I retired, within like a week, they flew me out here, no and way. I was, wor- I was no working, way. like a week after I retired, <laughs> I went straight into it. So I just took that same personality that, you know, that I saw, and the same personality that I had, and I said, if it's going to work for him, I know this can, I know I can do the same thing. Just yeah. be yourself, be genuine, you know, be entertaining. Nobody wants to see you drawing up X's and O's and the <laughs> little mundane. No, who wants to see that, man? You know, people want to be entertained now. Absolutely. So you got you to gotta give them, you know, you got to entertain them. And so I approached it like that, and I was like, I'm just going to do things that I would want people to see. So you guys, on your NFL show uh, yeah. with uh, Chappers and, yeah. and Jason, you yeah. guys have got great chemistry. What's it like in studio? You guys just at it all the time, like going at each other? Constantly. <laughs> constantly, man. Constantly. Locker room mentality. Yeah, because, right? you know, Ch- Chappers is, is, is a really good dude, man. He's really cool. He's yeah. funny, and he understands us. And me and Jason played together, and we were friends. So right. I've known him yeah. the whole time. Yeah. So it's not like everything just kind of transferred over. Because it's not like we had to get to know each other yes. and any, we're just being ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with regards to the NFL in the UK, yeah. uh, which is what you, you guys were brought on, um, do you think there's ever going to be a franchise out of the UK, a uh, football franchise out of the UK? Out of, out of, out of the US, US, sorry? Yes. Yeah, how, long do you, so. how, how long do you think before that happens? I would say within 10 years, I, I, I would assume. Because the NFL in America is massive. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sucked up all the oxygen <laughs> in the country. <laughs> like, there's nothing left there. And a, as a business, and a, as a business model, you're constantly looking to expand. Yeah. And there's no, there's no more room for growth over there. There's only, they can only go down. Right. You know, so yeah, the yeah. next place would be worldwide, you know, domination, man. Yeah. And if you actually watch a football game and you understand what's going on and you see a good one, you love it, yeah. you know, and that's yeah. it's universal. Anybody yeah, yeah. who sees it and understands it yeah. is going to love it. So why not, you know, try and take it, you know, abroad? And um, England is six hours away from New York, six hours away from the East Coast. That's right. It's the same flying as New York to San Francisco and New course. York to L.A. It's the exact same distance. Yeah. And they play each other all the time. Yeah. So the next place would be here, and I think they've invested a lot of money here, and they're going to do it. Do you think um, the Premier League can learn a lot from the NFL, what do you think they could learn from the NFL? Yeah, well, the first thing that they need to figure out is um, all this stuff about the same four teams winning every single year is ridiculous, man. They need to figure because in the NFL they have something called revenue sharing. A team can only spend all the teams can only spend the same amount of money. Right. The team that finished last this year gets the highest draft pick next year. Yeah. So it's it's so even. The it's Rooney so much, rule. Yeah, Rooney <laughs> rule, exactly. There so many things. So many things that, so many things that they, you know, they can do to make things fair. And th- there's no, in the NFL, the team that finished last this year 
can legitimately win the Super Bowl the following year. And yeah. it, it's every single year it happens like that. So yeah. it, it's a lot that they, they, they can learn. I'm not trying to knock the, the game because I love it myself. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, we need more teams to be able to win. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Um, all right, so moving on to a slightly different subject. Bro, you married Miss Universe. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what? Like, what, what I, when I read this, I was like, this guy, is li- you, have li- you are living the dream. Man. Living the dream. It's, it's How did crazy. that come about? Like, uh, yeah, First of all, she married me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true, that, true that, true that. But no, I no, no she's, she, she, she's a great woman, man. And um, what happened was my, my last year in New York, she had just won, and so she had to live in New York for a whole year. That was their whole organization thing. Right. Yeah, so um, there was a lady who was working for me at the time who um, she was trying to always get me to go to these fashion shows, and I didn't. I wasn't about that life at all, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. because Atlanta <laughs> is a different kind of person, yes. different kind of woman than yes, the yeah, fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so uh, she was always trying to get me to go. So one day I was just like, you know what, let me just, let me just go see what, what she's talking about. So she finally dragged me out. And the day I, she dragged me out, um, my wife, well, she was my wife at the time, just so happened to be coming to the event that day to do, um, to do she was doing something for the designer. Right. And so, um, so I was sitting down and my wife walks in but I, you know, I was sitting next to a, an, another person, and so my wife knew the person, so she starts waving at, at him. Yeah. But because I'm so big-headed and <laughs> cocky, I'm thinking, oh, she must know who I am. So, so I start waving at her, and you should have seen her face. She was like, what, who is it? And she just sat down. And, Who's that guy? Yeah. And so I, was like, so I started talking to the guy. I was like, man, what is going on? Who is this? And he was like, yeah, that he knows her. She's a really nice girl. She just so happens to be single. I don't know why he told me all this information right then. God. I, right? <laughs> God. It has to be. So I was like, please, 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 just introduce me to her, please. Yeah. And so he was like, all right, cool. So after the whole thing, he introduced me to her. And um, we talked. We vibed immediately. We went on a date that same night. No way. I promise, man. Wow. And we've been together since that day. Are you serious? Yeah, it's been five years now, man. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's Absolutely cool. Absolutely insane. How do you spend your spare time when you're not like when you're not working, yeah. when you're not traveling backwards and forwards across the Atlantic? What do mm. you do to kind of like, just chill out, have fun? Nothing. Is it? Do you know I'm what? So bro? Lazy. <laughs> That's the best way to chill, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Just, just like. Do absolutely zero. Nothing. Really? Nothing at all. Might go to, to movies. I love movies. Yeah. Um, I eat quite a bit. <laughs> you know, I also work out quite a bit also. So I do everything, man. You know, play a lot of soccer, right. um, a lot of sports in general. If you could have been uh, a professional footballer, soccer yeah. player, yeah. what position would you have played? Left back. Left back, yeah? Left back, yeah. So that means you should be quite talented because yeah. lefties are normally quite... Gifted. Uh, oddly enough, I'm not left footed. <laughs> Are you not left footed? No, I'm right footed, but okay. I play left back. Right. And so it's it's opposite. In. Yeah, because right. I like okay. to go up, cut in, right. pass the ball. You. you know, a lot of times. Because I play five a side most of the time. It's not really like, yeah, 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 yeah. so I'm going back and forth. But anytime you want to just look to the left and in the back, I'll be there. <laughs> All yeah. right, cool. Uh, music. Yeah. What sort of music are you into? What, what music do you love? Everything, man. Yeah. Yeah, hip hop, um, R&B. Um, like pop music too, man. Me yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I do. Me too. So when you were when you were playing, did you mm. what did you used to listen to to get you like pumped up for a game? Oh, definitely Fifty Cent, um, yeah. Jay Z, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne was Weezy. popping. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Future. Listen, stay away from Future, man, because <laughs> if if you're not in the right frame of mind and you listen to Future, you you do something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you should make you do something crazy. But stay away from that guy. So you, you still train? You still like yeah. in the gym? Still like Every day. Still do um, any, any like, you know, NFL training? And no, no. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no. I'm done, no. I'm Listen, done. I played those 12 years, and I outside of watching football, I don't want nothing to do with football <laughs> anymore, man. I'm, like, completely done with it. It's um, I like to watch it. I like to look at it. But yeah. playing, mm <laughs> No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, so. Um, we end all of our interviews with just five set questions that mm-hmm. we ask every single guest that we have. Okay. Kind of like a quick fire, but, you know. Um, ready for them? Yeah, let's go. All right, so the first one is, what is the biggest misconception about you? Biggest misconception about me? I am such a sweetheart, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like a nice, nice guy. Like, I don't have no, you know, people th- you see NFL players and they think they're all big, tough, you know. Right. I am the complete opposite really? of that, man. I, I don't even have a, 
a mean, violent bone in my body, but for some how reason, did, how did you play I that don't know. Position for I have so no long. idea. Because you no probably hard hitting to play your position. No clue how I did it because <laughs> my mentality is the complete opposite of yeah. what you would think an NFL player's mentality is right. supposed to be. That's interesting. Real interesting. If you could make a documentary mm -hmm. about anything, mm -hmm. what would it be about? Documentary about anything would have to be about politics in Nigeria. Yeah. You gotta you gotta see what's going on over wow. there. Yeah, and it's um. Nigeria is so, like, within the country, there's division because you have three main tribes. You have the Igbo, the Yoruba, and the Aousa. Right. And so to see, like, a country like that divided yeah. within itself is, is a really strange thing to see. Yeah, and yeah. then the minute they leave the country and they go abroad, they're all Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But when they're in the country, they're divided. It makes zero sense to me. So I'll, I'd like to document something like that. Okay, okay. Um, Who's the one person that you think we should interview on this show? On this show? Like, by your recommendation. Wow. It could I'll, be anyone. anyone. I would love to see you guys interview Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, <laughs> but I would, love, I would love to hear his answers to some of the questions you've asked me here. I've seen a couple of interviews with Tom. We've actually met him, like, maybe once or twice. Really? Like, yeah, just, like, on red carpets mm. and stuff. Lovely guy. Um, yeah. I, maybe you could have a word for us, like put a good word for us. You know what, I, 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 I want to meet him myself. <laughs> so, you know, maybe if you guys can put a word in for me so I can meet him, all you right, know. Right. Depending on who sees him first, we'll all do right. that, we'll do all that. Right. Uh, and finally, the big one, what is your motto? My motto, nothing is what it appears to be. What nothing is what it appears to be. Always remember that, like, whatever you see here, it's not... <laughs> it's not what you're thinking, man. There's always something underneath it, Absolutely. man. So never take anything at face value. You know, try to understand what's really going on underneath that. I see. Thank you yeah. so much, bro. Thank you so much, man. Look I appreciate it. that, nice man. So this is cool, you. man. Yeah, man Whatever you guys want, man. <laughs>